When Intel's ARC GPUs were officially released and hit store shelves last year, I was quite critical of them. Due to various reasons, I straight up said that you should pass on them and there are better alternatives for your money. While I still stand by some of those points today, I now look at the cards in a much more positive light and am optimistic for the future. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. For this video, I wanted to talk about Intel, their ARC GPUs, and how they'll impact the future of the PC gaming market. If you've been following my channel for a while now and have seen my recent videos, you'll know that presently I'm not too thrilled with the state of the GPU market, more specifically the turnout of new releases from manufacturers like NVIDIA and AMD. NVIDIA's upcoming RTX 4070, 4060 Ti, and 4050 are all GPUs that I have recently talked about and I've made it clear that I'm not looking forward to them. These GPUs are going to be way too expensive, they will not be delivering on the performance that we've come to expect from these tiers, and will have specs that make their future quite questionable. When it comes to AMD and the Rating on Technologies group, they have truly just become a sad state of affairs. AMD over the past few years has had multiple, multiple golden opportunities to claw back some market share from NVIDIA and give PC gamers what they've been expecting from them. Instead, they have simply chosen to pass up on those opportunities and followed NVIDIA's lead. At this point, you can't really put too much faith into them, because when you see their recent decisions, it's clear the discrete gaming GPU market is just an afterthought for them. That leaves us with the third option, Intel, who I'd say have entered the market at a pretty good time given the discontent I and many others have had with their competitors. Now initially I wasn't too hyped up when their ARC A770 and A750 GPUs had hit store shelves and that was due to early issues in regards to driver stability, performance inconsistency, and pricing. However, I wanted to make this video because there have been quite a lot of changes over the past few months involving these cards and I think it's only fair to revisit this topic and give you guys some updated thoughts. When we started to see leaked slides and information come out surrounding ARC in 2021, it was expected that Intel was targeting RTX 3070 levels of performance for their flagship card, but as we got closer to launch, that performance target was brought down a notch to RTX 3060 levels. On top of that, once the review embargo lifted, we saw performance was just all over the place. In some instances, we saw the A770 perform close to an RTX 3070, in some titles it was performing comparable to an RX 6600, and along with that, performance in older DX9 and some esports titles was wasn't very good since these cards don't support DX9 natively and use a DX12 translation layer, and DX11 performance isn't very good either. Now given that most of the titles are using modern level APIs like, you know, DX12 and Vulkan, I can see why Intel decided to go this route. However, one of the biggest selling points of the PC platform is that you can go and play a game from 2006 if you want. You know, there's endless backwards compatibility. That old game will work just fine on an NVIDIA or AMD GPU. Furthermore, performance alone wasn't the problem. Many people reported weird bugs, graphical issues, black screens, crashes, and more. Adding on to that, I thought Intel should have priced the cards more aggressively. At launch, given these issues I highlighted, the only people who were buying these cards were Intel fans and hardware enthusiasts just looking to tinker around with something new. For the most part, buyers who wanted to just game with a stable experience, NVIDIA's RTX 3060 or AMD's RX 6650 XT were better alternatives. And the 6650 XT was considerably cheaper too. I did make a video talking about these issues in more detail when these cards came out, so you can go back and rewatch that. All in all, it comes down to this. If you can't properly compete on performance, if you have issues with software, then you have to at least compete on price, otherwise nobody is going to buy your cards. Intel decided not to do any of those things, Therefore, I couldn't recommend them at the time. Now fast forward like a half a year and the consensus surrounding ARC has changed considerably. Over the past couple of months, many tech review outlets have revisited Intel's ARC GPUs with updated drivers and have found performance has increased significantly. Gamers Nexus in their review found that performance in those competitive games like Rainbow Six Siege and CSGO doubled, if not the improvement was greater than that which is excellent. Chris from The Good Old Gamer made a great video showcasing modern gaming benchmarks with the ARC A770 and found it to be competitive with GPUs from their competitors which still cost considerably more. 
Along with that, after reading different updated reviews and comments from users, many are now claiming that, for the most part, ARC is stable, with some minor issues here and there, but they can now be recommended as a viable choice for PC gamers. So gaming performance has improved, and they're performing consistently in line with their competitors. Driver stability has also improved to the point where most users who are going to be using these GPUs for modern gaming can slot them in their systems and have a pretty good experience for the most part. Of course, I'd still say you'd have to err on the side of caution because they aren't as stable as Nvidia, so some troubleshooting can be expected, but nonetheless, it's a good step in the right direction, one we didn't have to wait too long for after launch. Apart from that, the other concern I had was pricing. When it comes to cost, you'll be glad to know that things have improved here as well, to the point where they are quite competitive with the alternatives. Over on Newegg, you can find an ARC A750 for $250, and I think there have been a few flash sales here and there where it does drop down cheaper to around $230. Intel also have this promo ongoing where you'll get two games and some creator software. Hey, I guess it could be a good time to dabble in a new hobby, I guess. But hey, that's a fantastic deal if you ask me. If this thing drops down to $200, it will unquestionably become the budget king. Now, something else worth pointing out is this ARC A770 from Azeroth. So you get the bigger, faster chip for not that much more. The 16GB version is going for considerably more, around $350, which is in line with RTX 3060s, but you do also get a bit more VRAM. And considering how some recent releases have been giving some 8GB cards a bit of trouble, it's something that's worth considering for longevity. Personally, I would save the money and live with dropping some settings down to medium. Taking all of that into consideration, I am quite happy to see the positive changes with Intel in the GPU market with their current offerings. But what about the future? I believe that their next generation GPUs will be even more important for the market than last gen, especially given the antics by Nvidia and AMD with the RTX 40 series and RX 7000 series respectively. This was some information that was circling around the PC tech space late last month. I did want to talk about it, but didn't get the chance to as I got busy with some other videos. The source for this info is Paul from the Red Gaming Tech YouTube channel, and here he talks about specs pertaining to Intel's next generation Battle Mage GPU. In this slide, the following is stated. We're looking at a doubling of the XC cores going from 32 to 64, and with the clock speed target at 3 GHz plus. If Intel can manage to achieve both of those, I'm not even considering architectural improvements, but those two changes alone can seriously propel them forward in the GPU performance hierarchy. Performance doesn't always scale linearly with the increase in shaders or clock speeds, but just a doubling of performance alone would put this card at around RTX 4070 Ti levels of performance. This will still utilize the same memory bus as the A770. Personally, I would have liked to have seen a 320-bit bus, but given that the amount of L2 cache is also tripled, should help alleviate some of the bottleneck. He did also show a roadmap with some dates, and I gotta say I'm hoping that Intel can meet their target date for the flagship Battle Mage in Q2 2024. If they end up releasing it in late 2024, they'll end up competing with Nvidia's RTX 50 series and AMD's RDNA 4 GPUs. Granted, we don't know anything about a release window pertaining to those cards, but if we're to go by previous release cycles, then it seems likely. As for pricing, nothing was mentioned about that, and I would bet Intel themselves probably don't even have that figured out as well. If you were to ask me though, given the specs, its release window, and if it really does end up performing around an RTX 4070 Ti, then I think Intel should price this GPU at around $399. But realistically, I can see them probably charging around $499 for it. Right now, Intel just don't have the same market share as even AMD or let alone Nvidia, so they're going to have to compete on price. Anything higher than that, and people will just buy Nvidia or AMD. Also, given that this GPU is probably going to launch around mid-2024, the market can be quite different by then. AMD's RX 7900 series will be out for almost two years, and given their recent decision, they could end up dropping prices like they did for the 6000 series. We've seen the RX 7900 XT drop to $800. We could end up seeing it fall below $700, even less. Nvidia could also come out with an RTX 40 Super Series refresh of some sorts and also drop prices by a bit. This is why I think they, if they want to get as many people on board with Battle Mage, then they have to be strategic about this. Many people will remember the rocky start with Alchemist and go, you know what, I don't want to be a beta tester for that much money, but if they can entice people with an aggressive price where they offer the same performance at 
half the cost or even 40% less, then they'll have a winner on their hands. NVIDIA probably won't care because, as I've said in the past, they've taken on this Apple-like approach where they do whatever they want in the market. However, AMD will be probably be forced to at least come back down to earth and also compete on price. So we'll probably see the situation where in the low to mid-range, you'll have AMD and Intel battling it out. And if you've got the money for NVIDIA's high-end stuff, you know, you th that's still available. But I think for the masses, AMD and Intel, it's just going to be the way to go. I'll be very much looking forward to what Intel has planned next for the GPU market. I am rooting for them to bring in some much needed fierce competition. It's only a matter of how willing they are to capturing that market share. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.